What's up guys, it's Semi-Eye here, and today we are taking a look at Dark Muck. So you must have seen him if you've seen any of my videos in plenty of my matches. He's a very common Pokemon in the meta, and today we're going to take a look at him to see how we can use him to our benefit. So he's, he's very common with good reason, because uh, Sticky Goo is the power that he has. As long as Dark Muck is your active, your opponent pays two more to retreat his or her active Pokemon, and the power stops working if Dark Muck is asleep, confused, or paralyzed. So, in a format where Double Gust means that retreat costs are very important, also in a format where your primary lead is a retreat-free Cleffa, so Cleffa is basically the the card that this format is based around. You always start with you always want to start with Cleffa to get set up in the first couple of turns, and he has a free retreat cost, so that he's it's never really you never get penalized for benching him because he also also becomes a free retreater to use throughout the match anytime something gets KO'd. But with uh, Dark Monk, that's not the case. If you if haphazardly put a Cleffa in the active, Dark Monk will definitely trap a baby in the active, increasing their retreat by two. So it's a very good disruption card. Also, the fact that he's a Dark Muck, because he has Dark in his name, he can utilize Dark Energy to boost his damage output by 10. So, in this format, there is no basic Dark and there's no basic Metal. Instead, we have Special Dark and Special Metal. This is the first time that these colors have been printed. And Special Dark here means that if you are a Dark type Pokemon, or if you have the, the word Dark in your name, then you get the benefit of increasing your damage output by 10 without taking 10 damage yourself. If you attach this card to something that is not a dark Pokemon or not a dark type Pokemon, then they take 10 damage as a detriment because uh, because of the way the special energy works. But Dark Muck gets around that, so we basically boost his damage output with darkness energy beyond the 20. And Sludge Punch here is for two grass, which is pretty reasonable. The faint Pokemon is not poison. So if you think about it, the power traps something in the active, Sludge Punch poisons them, which means they take 10 damage every turn, and they do base 20 that you can boost up to um, 30 or 40. Now, to do keep in mind that because the opponent is actually poisoned, there's no flip involved, this actually becomes a base 30, because they're always going to take that 10 damage at the end of their turn uh, once you poison them. So it's essentially base 30 for 2 grass, and then you boost it up to 40 or 50 with the dark energy. So it makes him a pretty powerful Pokemon. He has 60 HP, which is on the low side, but there's even a stadium uh, that boosts dark that boosts dark Pokemon's HP up by 20. So it's actually a pseudo 80 HP. So he's just got a lot of things going for him, and that's why you see him so much in the meta. His one real weakness, though, is the fact that it is a psychic weakness. And there, to, to be fair, there are plenty of psychic Pokemon in the meta. We've used psychic Pokemon in the past to um, to one shot Dark Mux. You know, this is this is a pretty significant uh, flaw in the in the deck for sure. But the fact that Dark Muck is just you know, you basically take it in and in this deck in particular, we're pairing him with uh, the Bats line, which is also weak to psychic. So to be fair, with this deck, you're basically taking an auto loss to psychic Pokemon. That's just an unfortunate way that the game is played. You know, weakness plays in a very important part, and in this case, we're basically taking all loss to Psychic so that we can take some good situations into the other types of matchups. Anyway, let's go on to the full build here. So we start out with the four Grimer and the three Dark Muck. So this is the Grimer that we've picked. Um, specifically because he's 50 HP and has the attack minimize, which reduces damage taken by 20. So it keeps the Grimers in play so that um, you can get the Mucks in play, which is the whole point. Um, Nasty Goo is okay as well. Do 10 damage for a single energy and you paralyze the opponent if it's heads. That's pretty good as a stall tactic for sure. 3 Cleffa is definitely the way that we try to set up here. We have a 3 count because our Pokemon count is already at 19. We really can't spare any more space. But in a deck like this, you normally run 4 Cleffa just because the setting up is so important. So that's the one consideration to change in the future. He's also, I mean, he's the basic card. I mean, the format revolves around him. Him allowing you to set up, prevent hand disruption, all that kind of stuff. So definitely play a 3 count of him. Minimum. So we run four Zubat, two. Um, we run four Zubat, three Dark Golbat, and two Dark Crobat. So we have a four-three-two line of bats. This is one of the compromises we've made to get everything else we need in the deck. 
but it's not too much of a compromise because I mean the sniping damage is really cool, but uh, Dark Muck also pulls his own weight, so you're not you're not reliant on the sniping damage too much. The sniping damage is helpful to get to use Dark Muck to get quick KOs. Really, beyond that, um, the sniping damage isn't really you know it's not that it's not the end of the show if you don't get the snipes. But anyway, we have the, the bat line. In this case, since we're running grass energy, we can actually use their attacks. So the Zubat, um, very important that because it's a sniping deck, all of your attacks are viable. Because with the sniping deck, these attacks can potentially KO the opponent because of the sniping damage. So I've, I've KO'd plenty of things where they have taken just enough damage due to sniping that I can just KO them finally with bite. So definitely don't under don't don't um forget about these these really simple attacks that these Pokemon have. They become very valuable. He's a free retreater, Zubat. He's also got poison spray, which is cool. Once again, per this is a unquestionable poison. You know, there's no coin flip involved for one grass, which we do run. So that's really cool. Resistance to fighting is also pretty good. Dark Golbat though, um. Whenever you play him into, when you put him onto the field, onto a Zubat, you snipe 10 damage anywhere. So if you've ever played Bats in the modern meta, then you know exactly how this one works. Golbat in this case does only 10 damage. Fritter is an attack here. It says choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 20 damage to that Pokemon. Don't apply weakness or resistance for this attack. So again, Fritter is a sniping attack. So you have a sniping power with a sniping attack. These combinations are very important to get critical KOs on Pokemon or, in, or even get damage on Pokemon. Just soften them up for Dark Muck. Final evolution here. We have a two count of Dark Crobat. So um, he has... A better version of the power here, instead of doing just 10, the surprise bite does 20 when you put him in play. So 20 plus 10 is 30. 30 damage is a very respectable amount of damage in this format. Most attacks only do 40 or 50 in, in general. So to be able to snipe 30 is, a, is saying a lot, and it's worth a lot. So definitely don't underplay the amount of damage we're doing here. Dark Drain is also an attack. Says flip a coin for each of your opponent's Pokemon for each head. So stack does 10 damage to that Pokemon. Don't apply weakness resistance. And then you remove a number of damage counters from Dark Crobat equal to the damage dealt. So this is a way of keeping Dark Crobat in play. Dark Drain also starts sniping on the bench as well. So the entire bat line is all about sniping and uh, gives you some really good op flexible options for putting damage in really critical points, you know. Dark Drain is on works on a coin flip though, so it's actually kind of weird that if you hit it, if you hit the opponent with Dark Drain, it's possible that their that their active doesn't take damage, but their bench does. It's kind of quirky that way. Notice that all of the bat lines have free retreat, so um, anytime you get your double gust, you can uh, either double gust into a usually powered up dark grimer i mean two energy cost is very realistic to have two full set up to, to have two full mucks set up you know to be able to attack with so double gust essentially becomes lysander sticky goo forces them to just be stuck in the active so you have plays of potentially deck outs and all that kind of stuff so it's a pretty good uh pretty good synergy going on with these with these cards moving on into um the energy counts so we have 13 Grass Energy and 3 Darkness Energy. 16 Energy in total, 3 of them are Darkness and 13 Grass. That's actually on the low count, on the low side for a lot of decks. But just, you know, Dark Muck takes 2 Energy, Dark Crobat takes 2 Energy. So you don't need high Energy counts with the deck like this, and that's why we only run 16. The 3 Darkness allows you to boost damage up. Um, it... Take note that the Darkness Energy can be attached to Dark Muck to boost his damage. It can also be attached to Dark Crobat to boost his damage. And if you attach it to a Dark Crobat, uh, the only way that it, it has an effect in play is um, if you attack the active and the active is a heads. So on a coin flip, if the active is heads, then you do 20 damage to it instead of 10. But, you know, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes you just need that extra boost and that's what Darkness Energy gives you. Moving on to the traders, or not traders, moving on to the, the trainers. Uh, we have three Pokemon trader. It's a very essential card because it allows you to get the right bats in play at the right times. It allows you to get mucks in play at the right times. Potentially, it's even worth going up to four because you run 19 Pokemon. There's going to be plenty of chances to use trader. So that's one consideration moving forward in terms of adjusting the counts is to get trader up to four. 
Good Manners is another card that we play, but two count here. Good Manners allows you to find your bats quickly. It's a consistency card. You know, if you don't have any basics in your hand, you play Good Manners and you get a basic from your deck and you put and then you put it in your hand. So um, it works really well to get Grimers and bats in play. You really want to swarm the field with plenty of bats and, and a couple of Grimers early on. So Good Manners also gets you Clef Fuzz in case your hand's dead. And so very important card, two count. Three Double Gust. Once again, like I said, uh, Double Gust is um, a very important card in the meta. It's it's a 3 to 4 count in most decks for a good reason. It's really your only Lysander effect. Also, there's no pure switch card in Gen 2, so Double Gust acts as a pseudo switch as well. Uh, this is also why retreat, count, retreat cost plays such an important factor, and why with Dark Muck you can Double Gust anything and then you trap them in the active because their in retreat cost increases by 2. So a lot of times, though, you're going to be trading your Double Gust for theirs, but you're going to be t attacking in the meantime, so, you know, definitely Double Gust is an important card. Most of our Pokemon are free retreaters, so Double Gust becomes usually a free, free Lysander for us, so a very important card. Single copy of Focus Ban. This is kind of like a placeholder. It's also good just to have. Obviously, against Psychic decks, you get one shot pretty easily. Focus Man potentially saves you, but not really. I mean, it, it's just a one count. It's not going to win you a match against a Psychic deck. Uh, it's just here because, you know, Dark Muck does have 60 HP base. Obviously, with the Stadium, you can boost it up to 80, but sometimes they bump your Stadiums, and so Focus Man is a bailout option just in case that one of, you know, to keep something alive for one extra turn. Two Gold Berry. Um... Because we've had we have so many Pokemon, we've had to sacrifice quite a bit on healing. Normally, Goldberry is a three to four count in most decks, but in this case, it's only two, simply because we have to make sp space for other cards. Goldberry, if you don't know what it does, it heals forty damage if your if your Pokemon has taken forty or more damage, um, and it, it discards itself when it gets used. So it's very good to heal and open up the tool spot for other things. Um, very useful to keep your Dark Mucks in play for longer. To count because we can't spare the space. Professor Elm is your standard pseudo supporter for the format. Of course, there is no supporters in Gen 2, but this kind of acts like a supporter because you can't play trainer cards once you play it. So, shuffle your hand in your deck, draw seven. General rule of thumb that I mentioned in all my videos is to use Cleffa's early game, use Elm's late game. Um, in this case, though, since setting up is so critically important, you might want to use a couple of Elms early just to make sure to get your Pokemon in play as, as soon as possible. One Scoop Up and four Hyper Devolution Sprays. So let's start with Hyper Devolution Sprays. So this is your way of reusing your bats. Choose one of your evolved Pokemon, take the highest stage and put it into your hand. So obviously you can devolve a Crobat and immediately place it down on, an, on a Dark Golbat to evolve it again. Hyper Devolution Spray is a 4 count, gives you uh, 4 reusable snipes that's guaranteed. Even if you devolve a gold bat, you can still reuse that one for a 10. And so um, we've actually, if you notice, we've stacked the counts in favor of Hyper Devolution Spray versus Super Scoop Up simply because it's more guaranteed. Now, Super Scoop Up is a coin flip, it fails 50% of the time. Hyper Devo never fails. So it's just worth more to us to be able to reuse our sniping as a permanent kind of thing. So. Hyper Devo is a four count. One single copy of Super Scoop Up. Just, you know, we started the build with more, but we've had to whittle it down to one simply because it's just out of necessity, really, for accounts for other things. Super Scoop Up, though, flip a coin of heads, return one of your Pokemon all cards attached to it to your hand. Obviously, you can reuse this for your bat lines to reuse a full line if it works. So, one count for that. A single copy of Breeder Fields. This is just in case you got a couple of bats early on and you draw into this semi-early. Breeder Fills lets you pick two Pokemon that are non-baby Pokemon that can evolve. And then you flip a coin if it's heads. Then uh, for each of them, you flip two coins. I'm sorry, you, you flip one coin for each Pokemon. So you flip two total coins. Uh, if both are heads, then you can search your deck for the two evolutions of the ones you picked. If only one is heads, then you pick the evolution for that one. But it's essentially just a way of getting evolutions in play. The good thing is that you put whatever you search out into your hand, not directly in play. So you can search out bats and you can place them down for the benefit of the power, you know, to, to get the sniping damage. So Breeder Fields is a really good card. Potentially even an, you want to increase it in the future, but right now we only have a one count. Two Rockets Hideout is our stadium of choice. Uh, this is the stadium that boosts your dark Pokemon to HP by 20. Once again, 
Dark Crobat gets this benefit, and Dark Muck also gets this benefit. So very good. Crobat or Dark Crobat can go up to 90. Dark Muck can go up to uh, 80. And and yeah, so just it's just too good of a stadium in this deck, especially since we have two Dark Pokemon to just not play. Also note that Dark Golbat is a Dark Pokemon as well. So even your middle evolution into the Crobat line can be protected with Hideout. Dark, Dark Golbat's HP is only 50. So definitely he likes to get to 70 to stay alive more often. It's totally worth playing two count. The final card in our deck is going to be not the Garbage Run. He's a very it's a very common card in decks in Gen 2. It's the first print of the the modern Super Rod. You choose up to three basic or evolution cards and or energy cards and you shuffle them into your deck. It's just a way of recovering energy and Pokemon lines. You know, we do play bats and if they get KO'd, then you might want to recover them to be able to use their power. So a two count of garbage run is definitely warranted to make sure that we keep bats in play. But that's the that's the list. You can clearly tell that um, we have we are really tight on space because there's so many good cards that we can play that we've had to cut back on. So, you know, it's, but despite that though, I think with these counts, there's a certain amount of consistency and damage output that makes this deck really work really well. Uh, it's, I think it's a very good deck. It, it could be borderline um, tier one, just with the benefit that Dark Muck gives you. Uh, I would say, I would put it very close to tier one, if not tier 1.5, maybe even. I mean, just the combination of sniping and dark monk, it's a, it's a very tall order to get to get over. The way that you lose, though, is if the opponent just sets up really fast, or if their damage output is really high to one-shot you guys. That's one possibility of loss. Uh, also, keep in mind that dark monk and the Golbat and Crobat lines have uh, abilities, and so you set, set, yourself, set yourself up for a pretty nasty Pichu deck. So if you don't know what Pichu does, Pichu is a baby Pokemon that has this attack called Zap. Does 20 damage to each of your Pokemon and play that as a Pokemon power. So Pichu will hit everything most of the time. So definitely get rid of Pichus. The good news though is that we are a sniping deck, which means that if you use the sniping damage onto a baby, it doesn't activate the baby rule and it doesn't even activate focus bands. And so a 30 HP baby can be knocked out fairly quickly because it's a sniping deck. But just keep in mind that this is a very real threat and you want to get rid of it as soon as you see it. But yeah, that's the deck. Let's go on to the matches. Um, I'll see you there. Alright, we got a match here against Blazon24. We unfortunately have to start with the Zubat, but we do have a Trader for a Cleffa. Can't use the Dark Energy, so we're going to have to use the Elm. Let's see what kind of deck he's running, though. Looks like he's playing Eevee and Bellsprout. So Umbreon and Erica's Victory Bell. We'll bench this. We'll trade her the Crobat for a Cleffa. Bench the Cleffa. And now we Elm, hoping to get an energy, which we do. Attach that here. Retreat into the Cleffa. And since we don't have any more basics in hand, we'll definitely just eek. A couple of Grimers is exactly what we needed. We have a Gobat as well. We need to figure out what's the bigger threat. Bellsprout, Erica's Victor Bell will do 50. The Umbreon will eventually, with Dark Energy, do enough damage. I think his HP is 80. The Victor Bell's HP is 80 or 90. So this is one of those things that sniping will be an important part. We don't want to snipe him anything above uh, 30 because he can heal it off with uh, the, the berry. So let's see. He plays Secret Mission and Poco and Misty's Wrath. He ended up losing two focus bands, a Bill War Point. I mean, I'm not sure why he's playing Misty's Wrath. It's not a good draw card, to be honest. But it's whatever. So he discards Narrow Gym as well. Let's see here. So I can definitely bench this. Attach the Grass Energy to the Grimer. We can uh, play the Dark Golbat. Uh, no, I'm thinking we're going to hit uh, hit the... Uh, so he hasn't actually attached a single energy to anything. 
So I, I'm actually just going to hit the Eevee because his two Bell Sprouts are kind of equal. So the Eevee ends up being worth more. Do we bench the Grimer though? I'm pretty sure I want to trade it for another Zubat. So let's do that. Traded the Grimer for a Zubat. Bench that. We're not going to play the Elm. We already have the energy drop for the turn, so we're just going to eek. We got a Crobat and a Muck, which is exactly what we need. No energy, though, which is a big problem, which means that we can't attack this turn. But the Dark Crobat will be able to do another 20. Total of 30. He can't heal that off no matter what he does. He evolves to the Umbreon. So leaning is he's leaning towards attacking with this. There's a grass, which now means we can attack. So we will do that. We can evolve. We can bench the crowbat. So we're gonna do a total of 60 damage with poison. Force him in. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely worth it. So we'll do this. Pile it onto the active. De evolution spray. Retreat into the muck. And then Sludge Punch. So, two more turns and he gets KO'd. Now he's not going to waste energies on this one, is my guess. He's going to start powering up something here. So, we, once, we hit, once he attaches energy, we know where to put our uh, damage counters. I'm thinking at this point, I'm going to target... I kind of want to target his Cleffas, but we're just going to do the Bell Sprout route. We're definitely going to... Um, Play the Rocket's Hideout, get the benefit from that. Play the Elm, play the Golbat to hit the same Bell Sprout. Attach. We can play. We can't play good manners, so then we just Elmed. So um, instead, we're just gonna attach a Grass onto the Dark Crobat, and we'll Sludge Punch even though we don't have to. He gets KO'd anyway. So we take a prize, we take out his EV, that's cool. He doesn't have any energy on the field. His hand was dead. He was trapped in the active, so it is, you know, it still works out well. He only has he only needs 10 more damage to take KO on the Bell Sprout. There is Cerulean City Gym. Let's see what this does real quick. Each player's turn and permit choose energy. Okay, so this just heals status. We're gonna bump that right away for sure. Um, we can good manners now. We already have three bats on the field, so this time we can good manners for a Grimer. Bench that attached grass to the Grimer. Um, I'm going to Elm because I want evolutions. Don't get any of that. So instead, we just sled punch, see if we hit him. We do. Nice. So we got a new hand, but we're already up two prizes. Our bat lines are in full swing. We have a Hyper Devo spray for a free 20 next turn. We have another Dark Muck getting set up. We actually can double Gust because everything is free. And if he brings up the other Grimer, then... I can easily um, power him up with another Dark Muck. So we're going to double Gust for sure. He's going to go after this guy. So let's go ahead and do that. We can double Gust the Vic Weeping Bell to the active. Weeping Bell. We can attach an energy onto Grimer and Dark Muck him. Trap him in the active. We can devolve the Crobat and immediately bench it on the second one to hit. I want to do the active because 30 plus 2 is 50. Might as well. And we can Sludge Punch. Get him to 50. Our hand's kind of dead now, though. But, um,. He evolves directly, but he still keeps a 50, so, and he attaches grass to Eevee, so he's actually going to get rid of Victory Bell then. Narrow Gym is played. 
Unfortunately, Zubat's going to have to go. We already have two bat lines, that's fine. And that's actually both of our stadiums, so now Narogym stays in effect, which is unfortunate. But we have two bat lines to play with, so it's not too bad. Breeder Fields gives me a Crobat, so I might as well might as well use that at this point. So Crobat, so 50, 60, 70, 80. So we KO the active. We can Breeder Fields the Crobat. And we get a head, so we get a Crobat. We can, uh, the, the the hard part here is, I think we're definitely going to do the EV. Because the active gets KO'd. So we'll hit the EV for 20. We can attach a second grass to the Dark Crobat. And we Sludge Punch for the KO. Three prizes now. He hasn't gotten anything set up. I mean, we're just rolling through this this match really quickly here. Both of our Crobat lines are fully powered up, so now just Devo Sprays and Scoop Ups are the only options we got left. We have two full attackers. I mean, it's just totally good. I think I'm actually going to hold my hand from now on because, I mean, there's no real, there's really no point. Sludge Punch, missed that one. That's fine. We're so far ahead. I'm comfortable with just attacking. I don't think that he can do much for the rest of the match. No, I think we've gotten too much of a lead here. We even have Dark Crobat to do sniping damage potentially, so there's just so many good things that are going for us. He's starting to get set up, that's fine. There's an Elm, uh, we might as well do that. Because I was really hoping for... Um, I can do Dark Energy now. We'll actually attach this to the second one. And um, Sludge Punch, take a KO, down to two prizes. He's still powering up, guys. I mean, it's pretty bad for him. We can double Gust and uh, attack one of his uh, Pokemon that he's actually going to be damaging with. The Umbreon's definitely worth attacking. Nightly Garbage Run, he's going to have to promote the one with the Dark Energy too. So this is actually doing 40 plus 10 is 50, 60, 70, 80. So we actually KO him. That's pretty crazy. So we double gust the Umbreon. And then we retreat into the one with the dark energy. Attach another dark energy to get to 50. And we sludge punch. And did I miscalculate? So 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Uh, what the heck just happened? I devolve the Crobat. I have no idea what just happened. Um, I, I'm not going to worry about it. So let's just take a prize. We're so far ahead anyway. It doesn't really matter. I want to hold on one second. So let's see here. Alright, yeah, like I said, we're not going to worry about it. It's fine. He plays Warp Point. Uh, I might as well promote the Cleffa. Puts me to sleep. That's perfectly fine. I can uh, actually just win the game. So I'll play this. And hit the Bell Sprout, And we win. Last prize. So that was a pretty quick match. Um... He really didn't get set up. We got set up really quickly. Started doing damage really quickly. I mean, and then him not being able to retreat really set him, set him, you know, pretty far behind. He couldn't use Cleffa to get set up. That was one of the big things in the beginning of the match. So yeah, this is like a really good example of just this deck functioning like it's supposed to. You know, taking KOs and sniping and all that stuff like worked out really well. So let's go on to the next match. All right, uh, another match here with uh, Blazon. So we'll start with the Cleffa for sure, and we're going to go ahead and bench the Grimer. He's playing a Zubat, so um, let's see if what kind of variant of the Bats is he playing. Attaches a Focus Spin and a Grass Energy to Zubat and then Elms. That's pretty interesting. Um, we really have nothing in hand, so I'm just going to Eek. There's a Dark Muck. I'm considering tradering him for bats. There's a Pichu. 
k. So how do we deal with Pichu is the question. Um, we definitely get bats in play and don't evolve them until it's time. He might set up as well, but that's perfectly fine. So we're going to trader the muck for a bat. We need to find a way to get enough cards in hand to one-shot the Pichu with just sniping damage. That's that's the play, really. Bench the bat, attach the grass to Grimer, and we eek. No trader this turn, unfortunately. He's also getting his bat line set up. We have a gold bat. Uh, we definitely play the good manners, but we can't because we have basics in hand, which sucks. So I feel like I want to bench another Grimer, but I think it just sets me up for Lysander target. I will do it anyway, though. And we're going to Elm because we're not guaranteed an Eek here. So we Elm instead. Um, didn't really get much from that, so now we Eek. And we failed the Eek, so that's unfortunate. We can set up the other Grimer, though, so we're perfectly fine so far. Focus bands will not work because of his sniping damage, so we've got to focus on that as well. He still hasn't gotten set up yet. I don't see a primary attacker just yet, so we'll see how it goes. He is actually setting up Gold Bat that has no ability, so this has to be the Crow Bat. That's not, that's not good for us, actually. Um... They do some pretty hefty damage outputs. He could gust of wind us right now, and it's a free gust of wind for him. I'm ca I'm contemplating focus banning because if I remember his attack correctly, two heads is confusion and 40 damage, and uh, it's 20 times he flipped four coins, so he can actually KO us with three heads. Um, that, he still needs three heads to KO with a Grimer though, so I'm actually okay now. So I'm gonna eek one more time. Hopefully I get this one. I do. Cool. We have an attacker now, Dark Muck is good. Um, if we top deck an energy, we can Gust of Wind and have a free of one of those. <sighs> Unfortunately, I can't play good manners just yet, simply because of uh, the Grimer in hand. I definitely don't want to play that just yet. Um, do I want to evolve right now, though, while he sets up these bats? It's a tr tricky kind of proposition, because I take 20 damage from the Pichu. I don't think I can do it just yet. I'm actually going to forego once again. So I can Elm. And I still don't have more bats. So now the question is, do I just attack? If I retreat and trap the Cleffa with the true retreat cost, I think I, I think that's fine. Now I just retreat. So we'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and do this. We can evolve. This means that Pichu can't get into the active so easily. And we'll go ahead and snipe the Pichu. And we're going to also hit the energy drop onto the Grimer. And we'll Sludge Punch. We actually take a KO, so that's perfectly fine. He's going to hit us with the Pichu. But the Crobat KOs him, and then we can hit a Golbat or Zubat. So it's still okay. He now he might want to actually attack with the Crobat just instead of the Pichu. So this will be interesting what he does. He plays a Murkrow doesn't really affect us at the moment. He can't actually retreat the Pichu, so he's forced to attack with it. That's pretty interesting. So we can actually attack with a souped up dark energy dark muck on his one of his attackers. So that works out well. He's not playing any of the sniping Golbats, and so we're not worrying about that. He starts hitting a dark energy on the Crobat. That's pretty unfortunate for me. Plays garbage run, recovers stuff. I don't know what he's playing to discard. He's playing, uh, he keeps playing Missy's Wrath. I'm not sure why he keeps doing that, but it's whatever. He actually does play double gust. So, um, and unfortunately he has free retreaters, so that really sucks. We'll put the Murkrow up. What can we do? What does he bring up? The, the Gobat? He does, okay. Does he KO me? Cross attack? Wait, Dark Energy doesn't. Does still 10 plus, but he takes 10 damage himself. So he just needs to hit two heads, and he does. That really sucks. That does suck pretty bad. Um, not enough to to do anything so far. What is he's a focus band on? He takes 10 damage. We never got to play Crobat, which which is bad. 
But that's fine. We have a dark, we have a gold berry though. So do I attach it knowing that I could get KO'd? How many, what would he have to do to KO me? He would have to play another dark. But if he, if he'd have to play another dark, I'm about to hit him for 40. He has 10 already, so that's 50. He has 40 HP left. If he plays another dark, that's 60, 70. I don't think he does that, so then 20, 40, 60, or 20, 40 plus 10 is 50. He still doesn't KO me, so I think definitely um, I attach the gold berry. Then I sludge punch. Poison him to 60. And he can't retreat. So he'll definitely hit us with cross attack. He might confuse us. There's a statistically positive chance that he will confuse us. So let's just see. He plays another Misty's Wrath for whatever reason. Plays a Crobat. That's another that's another one powered up. He actually can't hit us. He actually retreats. Wow. Okay. And he gets tails, tails, heads, and tails. Ouch. That sucks. We just sludge punch. But now he just needs two heads to KO me. So that sucks. But we still sludge punch because that's all we can do. This one also has a focus band on. It does. That's weird. I'm not sure why he's playing focus band with a 90 HP Crobat. That doesn't make much sense, but it's okay. Grass is, attaches the grass to Crobat. He KOs me. That's perfectly fine. Now I promote the Crobat. Bench the Zubat. Um, garbage run for sure. So... We'll do this, this, and this. Instead, we're actually just going to get this, this, and that. That's what we'll do. Do these guys. Do I attach a grass to Zubat? I might as well. And we're going to eek. There's a scoop up. Um, still, unfortunately, no muck. And he can actually KO the Grimer with a double gust, which sucks. Yep. <sighs> Yep. And he actually heals himself of status, so he's he's at 30 HP each. We just gotta get lucky with these flips. I don't oh we did. Oh man. Okay. Um We can double gust again so that we don't waste energy. Or we can Professor Elm and try to hit him. I think we Elm and hit him. That might be the better play. So let's Elm. We got it. So we bench this to we'll evolve into Dark Muck and we Sludge Punch. Take a KO. There's a Golbat. He can obviously retake a KO by getting the statistically 50% flips here, which he does. So that's fine. Um, we'll evolve this to hit the active. And we can attach a grass onto the goal bat. Let's see if the attack is worth doing right now. Let me just double check here. This attack is 20 damage to that Pokemon. Don't apply weakness or resistance. So it is technically worth doing. I could potentially KO the Crobat, but he's played a couple of double gusts now, three to be exact. Which means that I'm not worried about him playing another one just yet. So I'm going to actually Elm and hope for a Grimer drop, which is exactly what I got. Nice. We'll go ahead and play this. We can't play the stadium just yet. So we're going to Eek instead. There's a Crobat for another 20. That guarantees the KO on the Crobat. That also gives me the attack here to do the rest of the field, which is cool. He plays his last double gust, man. Come on. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, but all four of his double gusts are gone now, so I'm not worried about this for the future. Maybe we even still survive this. Who knows? It is quite unfortunate that that happened. We do have a traitor, though. Instead, he goes for the Murkrow and mean looks me. <laughs> okay. Evolving breaks mean look. So, um, I don't think he thought that through. 
So we'll evolve and hit the Crobat for a free prize. Um, bench this. We're actually going to super scoop up. Attach the first of all the energy here. We're not going to scoop up just yet. We're going to hit him with the Crobat. And we'll put the stadium now in play. And dark. So can he KO me though? Fainted Dak does 20, 30, 40. No, he can't. He's nowhere near KOing me, so we're fine. Dark drain him. Hit everything. So we got another 10 on Pichu, which is cool. If he does enough damage to potentially KO me, I can scoop him up and uh, start evolving something else. There's another Crobat. We're actually even on prizes. I definitely want to take another KO though on the Pichu. So I'm tempted to scoop up here and start, start evolving the Zubat to take that prize. So to, but technically though, Pichu is not valuable to him right now because he only hits just Crobat. So I'm okay actually. I'm thinking more long term, you know, eventually. So I'm actually just going to do this. And I might just Dark Energy him. Should I do it? Might as well, right? I'm going to scoop him up eventually anyway, so we'll just do this. And Dark Drain. So, unfortunately, um... Wait, what? Why did I only take 20 damage? Or why did I only restore 20 health when I had a uh, gold berry attached? What just happened? Oh, okay. So he just, okay, so he hit me and then it just disappeared. Okay, so I see. Never mind. We're good. Um, 20. I still do Dark Drain. Take a KO on the Pichu. We got we got Tails on the Murkrow, unfortunately. So his Crobat's not powered up. Um, Breeder feels for sure. Definitely. Get the Grimer and the Zubat. So we got a heads on the Dark Muck, which is cool. And uh, tails on that one, so that's fine. Now we definitely uh, double gust. So double gust, hit this guy. He'll be forced to promote the grammar, which is fine. This is the important one. Um, we evolve, trap him in the active. We're going to scoop up now the crowbat and bench this. Bench this, not that one. Bench this to the second one. To do I hit the crowbat? Because I'm doing 30 plus 10 is 40 plus 10 is 50, and this is the crowbat snipe. So we we'll hit the active for sure. Um, we attach the dark now to the active, and uh, we sludge punch to get to 60. We have two prizes left. Can he KO me this turn is the question. Because we don't have a follow-up attacker. We take a KO on the Murkrow. He doesn't KO me, but instead he actually... Um, hmm. So we double Gust, I think, here to free up our active. Because everything else is a free retreater. Okay. I'm actually inclined to get the Kef the Clef in the active. Because he has no more double gusts, we know that. So we're going to promote his uh, Crobat. And then retreat into Cleffa. We're going to evolve into Dark Crobat. And take a hit on his Murkrow. So that he can't trap the Cleffa. We attach the Grass onto Dark Crobat. And we also hyper devolve. Um, how many traders have I played? One trader. Yeah, we hyper devolve because I think we can get traders. We can with the trader we can get it back. 
So we'll do this, and then we're just going to eek. He has no more double gust, so I'm not worried about that. He can hit the Cleffa all he wants. I have another Cleffa right here, too. He plays Misty's Wrath with his deck at 9. What are you doing, dude? What is this? What am I even watching here? I... <laughs> Okay, I'm that that has to be a game over. Traitor the muck. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I already have the dark crowbat, so we have the KO. So yeah, I don't know what was going on with that. I mean, I guess he was desperate. I don't know. Anyway, we're we'll go ahead and take a KO on this one, take our last prize, and we get 80 coins for it. Cool. I think that might be just enough to get uh, a deck, or I'm sorry, not a deck, but a pack. But anyway, um, that was the match. Uh, it was kind of hairy there in the beginning there, but once our deck got into motion, you know, it worked out really well. I don't think at any point in the match we were behind. I feel like we were pretty much ahead for most of it. Um, we were even prizes for a while. Sniping is really important, and we used it effectively. Um, and yeah, so um, that was the match. Let's go see if we can open up a pack here. Let's take a look. We have, we have 170 coins. Uh, we might as well get, and we have a free base element, so we'll use that for sure. Let's see what we get. Get a Snorlax and a Dark Flareon, okay, and a Pokemon Center. We're going to use the 170 coins to buy a Ruby and Sapphire, and we get a Soul Rock and a Volbeat. Might as well start dissolving here, because we are, I'm pretty sure we have more than five of certain things, or more than four to dissolve this. So while I'm dissolving here, um, moving on to, into future decks, we're, we're starting to wind down with our potential deck options for sure. I'm actually going to keep the Snorlax for some reason, but whatever. Um, I'm not exactly sure what we'll be doing next, to be fair. Um, it'll just have to be a surprise, I guess. Um, there's, if you guys have any ideas, let me know. If you guys want to see me play a certain deck, or uh, if you, you know, do you, if you have any thoughts on the Neo era at all, just let me know down in the comments, and we'll 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 hash it out. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if like and subscribe if you're liking what you're seeing. Um, it's always good to meet some fans, so get into the game too. You know, like it's pretty easy these days to get into the the um, into TCG one. It's easy to set up, you know, play a match or two, see if you like it. It's totally worth it. Um, playing the old formats is super fun. You know, it's learning a new format. If you're if you're an experienced player, learning a new format is always amazing. It's a blast. So definitely jump into it if you can. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in game. And thanks for watching. Till next time, guys.